Hello there. Today we're going to talk about the blue-green villain shell. I think that all of these heroes are pretty phenomenal, uh, whether they're running the blue base or the green base. So, you know, Krennic and Aiden would be running typically Energy Conversion Lab, and Palpatine and Tarkin would typically be running a 30 health blue base. And there's a lot that's the same about these decks. And so we can use that to our advantage when we're building it, but also when we're playing against it. I think it's probably a safe bet that 21 in cards in the deck are not going to change. You're going to see three copies of every single one of these cards as long as budget isn't a constraint, right? The three Darth Vaders might uh, hold somebody back. But in general, uh, you're going to see these cards. For turn one, what this deck typically wants to do is play Inferno 4. It's phenomenal to get a decent space unit uh, up that can set up your next turn, right? So if you're planning on ramping, uh, it can, you know, get you to a five drop. If you don't have the ramp, it can uh, get you closer to finding your super laser technician or your resupply. And that's really what the deck typically wants to do on the second turn is play super, la super laser technician or resupply. Uh, it might not be advisable against a really aggressive deck, uh, but against anything mid-range or control, that's that's pretty much what you want to do. Power of the Dark Side is amazing. Uh, it is great in the early game to take out your opponent's you know, turn one play like an A-wing. It's great in the middle of the game, uh, and it can be deadly towards the end uh, if you can control your opponent's units and, and use it to take out a leader. Death Trooper is typically not the greatest card in the deck uh, for generic purposes, but it's phenomenal with Vader, right? So when you play Vader, you get to look through your deck and pull somebody else into play. And... Uh, you know, it has to be a, a unit that costs three or less that's villainy. And Death Trooper fits the bill. And uh, because you can trigger the Death Trooper when played before you trigger the ambush from Vader, uh, you can essentially kill something that has seven health when you play Vader. And that is a important number. Uh, so you can take out their Boba Fett if you haven't killed him yet. Uh, you can take out a Luke. Uh, you can get rid of some pretty uh, important things with that combo. Early in the game, a lot of times I'm resourcing Death Trooper unless he has units that he can actually kill with his uh, uh, two damage. Though it is worth noting that you can use him to kill your own super laser technician, which is a good play. And you can also use him to... Uh, uh, energy conversion lab someone for basically five right so uh, you use the ambush you get the wind played uh, that does two damage and then you hit them for five and then overwhelming barrage i don't think i need to uh, extol the virtues of this card too much uh, it generates an amazing board advantage uh, by uh dealing a ton of damage in a flexible way, right? So this deck is a little light on space units. So a lot of times you're uh, just wrecking your opponent's uh, space arena. So beyond those 21 cards, uh, you're going to see quite a few of these cards. Uh, and I split them into three categories, early, middle, and late game cards. Season Short Trooper is kind of both. Uh, it's a 2-3 to start, but later in the game it can be a 4-3, which can help uh, close out games. I am uh, I used to have three of it in, in all of these decks, and I've started reducing that, uh, just because in that aggro matchup, typically Probe Droid is better, right? Because it can trade with the Sabines and the Battlefield Marines, uh, getting you into your late game without putting you at a disadvantage. Uh, but Yularen is actually really, really good uh, no matter what matchup you're in. Uh, in that aggro matchup, if they don't kill him, uh, you're going to get a decent amount of healing 
uh, with his effect. And if they do take the time off to kill him, well, you've basically added three health to your base. So that can be fun. Uh, regional governor uh, is nice because kind of like the seasoned short trooper, it can be a little bit flexible. So early game, it can be good to play and, you know, name a wing or four cause I believe in. Uh, but late game, you can still name for a cause I believe in, or even, you know, in a mirror match named Darth Vader or something like that. The cell block guard and the, the royal guard are good sentinel options. Uh, so the, the royal guard can a lot of times uh, get you a little bit advantage because it will trade into almost all the two and three drops and uh, and stick around. Consortium Star Viper, uh, great for taking out A-Wings, especially when you use Energy Conversion Lab. Not quite as good in the Tarkin and Emperor lists that run the blue base. And then Snowtrooper Lieutenant is good to help make sure that you can take advantage of your turn one play, right? So if you're running Regional Governor, you might think about Snowtrooper Lieutenant just to get her to actually hit something for three. In the mid game, these are the cards that I'm typically looking for. Make an opening is great against Boba Fett. Uh, it's not as good in other matchups. In Boba Fett, it can kill typically nine units, uh, a couple of them that have shields, and heal your base. So it's, it's getting some two for one value. System patrol craft is shoring up our weak space lane. Uh, entrenched a lot of times is used as kind of a form of removal in this deck just to get to the late game, uh, but it can set up uh, a nasty overwhelming barrage as well. I'm currently not running a lot of takedowns in these decks, but I usually have them in the sideboard because against Sabine or against uh, Achura, it's amazing. Gideon uh, can be fun. He can really help uh, swing the game. If you haven't had to use your energy conversion lab, he comes in and kills something and then turns into a 6-6 with some damage on it. Uh, a 7-6 if you're in, uh, if, if you're running uh, Krennic. And that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of power in the middle of the game. I'm not quite as hot on Rook. Uh, I think he's cool, but at this point in the game, uh, a bigger body, I think, is more important. So a lot of times Gideon is better, or Traitorous can be better as well, right? To steal your opponent's unit, to make your power of the dark side hit them even harder. And then Vigilance is also quite a bit of fun. Uh, you know, it's, it's another two for one. Just like Traitorous, taking a unit from your opponent, giving it to you, you're basically healing five, uh, and then defeating a unit with three or less hit points most of the time. But the other two can be useful as well, right? So giving a shield to your Gideon that came in the turn before um, can be great. And then discarding uh, can be great in a control mirror uh, where you might get them milled, taking some base damage. These are the cards I'm typically looking for to close out the game. Uh, Super Laser Blast is great uh, if you're way behind. A lot of times, once you've gotten to eight resources, you've already kind of won. But it can be especially helpful against some big leaders like Vader's or Luke's. Count Dooku is kind of like a poor man's Vader, but he can actually have some pretty significant impact. You'll notice a lot of this... Uh, slide here are giant uh, vehicles that have when played effects right so uh, five of these cards are big things that have when played effects and that's kind of why Admiral Piet is here right so if you just play Count Dooku you're getting the kill and then you're kind of getting a three for one in total, right? Because you get the kill now, you're probably going to kill something while he's shielded, and then you're going to kill something else uh, once he loses the shield. If you have Piet on board, you get to do it now, right? So you get a two for one right now where you'll kill something uh, and, uh, you know, attack with him. 
and then you also kill something later. Uh, same thing with reinforcement walker. Uh, if you're in trouble of dying and you've got P yet, uh, reinforcement walker heals your base for six because you get the wind played and the ambush trigger. Uh, discard the top two cards of your deck, heal for six. That will end a lot of games. Cargo Juggernaut does the same thing, right? As long as you have a blue unit on board. If you don't, it's not great. But if you do, Cargo Juggernaut at six is is can be better than uh, Vigilance. Vigilance, uh, you know, heal five and kill a unit. But Cargo Juggernaut is going to heal you for four and probably kill two units before it goes. So it's, it's a three for one, which is great. Uh, Vanquish is probably our best fire spray killer, so I pretty much always have it either in the deck or in the sideboard. And then Avenger, Relentless, and Devastator are when things get really, really fun. Uh, if you get Avenger out, you've probably won unless it's in a mirror match. If it is a mirror match, Relentless is actually really, really important to turn off your opponent's Vigilances and Vanquishes. And then it doesn't get much more fun than playing Devastator. I did want to include a few honorable mentions. Uh, so certainly if you're uh, on a budget, uh, you can include some of these. Uh, and we'll talk through some of the decks where I think that they're a little bit more interesting. Uh, but the Scout Bike Pursuer and the Steadfast Battalion and the Academy Defense Walker all make a lot of sense in Krennic. Right, because you've got more damaged units, and the Steadfast Battalion uh, helps uh, it, it because Krennic comes out a little earlier. The TIE LN, the TIE Advanced, and Veers, are, I think, are all a little bit more fun in Tarkin, where you're trying to build uh, massive units and playing below curve a little bit uh, can be a good thing because he can help smooth it out. So uh, we've we've already kind of talked about this uh, when I'm running Krennic, a lot of times I'm shoving these cards into my deck. If I'm running Palpatine, uh, Royal Guard's got to be in there. He turns into a 3-5, which is amazing. And typically you need a little bit more early game help, so I would prioritize the Ularin in that uh, game. And Modi's a little interesting uh, in this deck. Now typically if you get to the Palpatine turn, you kind of have already won. Uh, but Modi can help add fuel to that fire to make sure that you get uh, maximum damage uh, on your uh, Palpatine turn. Tarkin, uh, I think a lot of people are sleeping on. Part of why I like this archetype is because I can kind of get reps in with it uh, in a competitive environment, but also at weeklies, right? So if you roll up to your weekly with an Iden Energy Conversion Lab, you're probably going to get some eye rolls. But if you bring Tarkin Blue, I don't think anyone will care. <laughs> but it's it's getting practice with basically the same deck, uh, just different uh, way of going about it. And I think Tarkin's actually fun because he can he can uh, add quite a bit of early game pressure with all the experience that he hands out and it's it's a really fun way to play Tarkin. Aiden I think is probably my pick for the most well-rounded of the decks just because her leader ability gets you value all game right so from turn two on you should be removing something pretty much every turn and if you can get to the late game, which you typically can because you're healing so much, uh, you get to play some some giant capital ships and you get to have a lot of fun. We'll talk about a few quick matchups. So versus Sabine, uh, you need to bring in more of the probe droids and more of the early, early sentinels. Uh, the probe droids are, are going to help you uh, make sure that you keep some early uh, units off the board. It's worth noting that you know if they start with initiative and uh, you have uh, a power of the dark side in your hand, a lot of times you're just passing or, or you're just letting them play their two cost unit. You're grabbing initiative and playing power of the dark side just to prevent them from getting a ton of extra value out of a wing leader or a fleet lieutenant. 
so you're kind of playing a turn behind, uh, but that will help make sure that you get to your mid game where your vigilance or your cargo juggernaut can get you healed enough that, that you can close it out. And versus Boba, uh, make an opening and vanquish are amazing. Uh, gotta have them in there to deal with Greedo, Crafty Smuggler, 7th Fleet Defender, and then Vanquish for the Fire Spray. And then a lot of times Reinforcement Walker is, uh, one, once I've played that, I, I feel like I've won the game. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I think that these are all great decks to play. Uh, super, super fun. And uh, if you enjoy Control, I think that you will have a lot of fun with them. Uh, take care.